I have seen in Scripture that it has gotten to the point where there's no... I, I'm beyond the point of being convinced that God does not exist. So, so, so how, could we, how could we ever have an honest conversation if your thing is you won't change your mind and you're convinced that we won't, even though we're telling you, yes, there, there are ways to change our mind if you actually presented good arguments. Yeah, evidence would convince evidence, me. You know? Good evidence would well, convince I mean, that, me. That's kind of my whole, my whole question, why I called. Uh, it almost seems, as far as the evidence aspect, it almost seems irrelevant if, it's not gonna, if either one of us aren't going to change our mind. Because no, you didn't even listen. Truth. You didn't even listen. We both just sat here and said that we are willing to change our minds based on evidence. Right. And then you turned well, around and ask, said you st it's a waste of time because neither of us are going to change our mind. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you be willing to consider that God did not consider slavery wrong if I gave you reasons why I thought he did, did not? Is it your position that God used slavery as wrong? I, I, my position I mean, is I'm not right. it's a, it, it's okay. Matthew. My position is that I don't think there's a God. Okay. Well, if, if, well, if there is a God who thinks sla if, if there is a God who thinks slavery is immor is morally correct as it's described in the Bible, then that God is a moral thug. He is immoral. He is advocating for something that is not moral. Okay. Based on what Scripture says about God and the laws He asserting slavery or servants, whatever, um, do you you that God views slavery as, as, as not as immoral and something that needs to be dealt with? A good argument and because evidence. Seems, is, is your position that God views slavery as good? And okay, the, as, as Matthew, the, as Matthew, as stop, as stop. You keep yeah. doing this, is my position that God does or God thinks or God... My position is that I do not believe there's a God. There is a Bible that endorses slavery, okay. and I view slavery as immoral, and I don't care what God's position is on it, whether he exists or not. Okay. The other week when you read from Exodus 21, yeah. uh, what, um, based on, simply based on all the scripture in the Bible, the discusses slavery and the treatment of slaves and all that. Yeah. And based on what the Bible teaches about God, do you believe God views slavery as good? <laughs> At, based simply on the Bible, not you know, out nothing no debate on whether God exists or anything, just based on what you would read in the Bible, what you would interpret yourself by reading the Bible. Based it, it, okay, so what you're saying is what if God inspired the Bible and the Bible supports slavery, does that mean God supports slavery? Well, does God view slavery as good? Because God condemned a lot of things in the Bible, but we... The, Bi the Bible example, condemns a lot of things. Whether or not God does is a separate issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, the Bible condemns a lot of things. So my question is, does the Bible view slavery as good? Let me ask it that way. It, the Bible endorses slavery as morally permissible. Okay, but that, you know, I'm, I'm just, do you think that's good or that you think that's uh, wrong? I've said repeatedly it's wrong. Okay, then you were talking about... Do you think it's right? Quote. Do you think slavery what? is morally permissible? I don't believe the Bible views slavery as good. I believe the Bible views slavery as, as something that humans naturally do to themselves, and the Bible puts laws in there to restrict people from mistreating each other. Okay, so That's you you think way. the God of the universe can tell you not to eat shellfish because that's immoral, but he's too weak to tell you to stop owning people as property? And beating them. And beating them? What? And passing them agree. on as property to your children? You agree slavery is oppression and mistreatment, correct? So yeah, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about owning another person as property. Yes, I'm talking about flavor mistreatment of others. I, I'm talking about you're, owning, you're Matthew, I'm talking about what the Bible says about owning other people as property. And I am talking about, do you believe that as oppression and mistreatment of others? To do you, own do you Matthew, do you agree with me that the Bible allows people to own other people as property? Yes. 
Do you agree that owning other people as property is immoral? Yes. Then why would God... And you're saying God, that's a contradiction, right? No, I haven't even got that? to the contradiction yet. This okay. is where the muddled thinking okay. comes in. You agree okay. the Bible allows for the owning of people as property, and you, mm -hmm. and you agree that God inspired the Bible. Yes. And God can tell you that something is immoral, like don't covet... Don't lie. Don't yes. eat shellfish. Do you think eating shellfish is immoral? Don't steal somebody else's freedom. Okay. But owning people's property. So now how is it that God can inspire a book that says it's okay to own people's property if in fact it's immoral? Because in that time period, and even today, slavery is a given. In fact, there's more slaves today. In you know what else is a given? Matthew, Matthew, yes. you know what else is a given? Rape, yes. murder, lying, eating shellfish. <laughs> all well, of those actually, things all of those things are a given about human nature, right? Yes, to respond to eating shellfish part. Remember in, in the New Testament, Christ did say that what goes into a man is not what makes him unclean. Right. So and thank you for pointing out. Th thanks for pointing out that Jesus was able to update one thing that got wrong in the Old Testament. Does Jesus ever say slavery is wrong? But Jesus actually fulfilled. The Does whole, Jesus whole ever Testament say law. slavery is wrong? Yes. Where? When he when when they say do not oppress. When Jesus said that's love not your neighbor as yourself. No. See, and you're you're love using an enemy. You're as using yourself. okay. Maybe the slaves aren't my enemy, and maybe I'm not hurting them, but I still own them as property. Does Jesus ever say it's wrong to own people as property? No. Let's let's think of a, let's think of a situation. Let's say I don't need period, I don't need a like, situation. I, I guess Matthew. the point is, Matthew, your your argument seems to be well, this is something you're never going to stop people from doing. So God didn't bother forbidding it. And what Matt keeps pointing out to you is there's a ton of things that people have done throughout history. They continue to do today that God forbidding it didn't stop them. Did God not know that it wouldn't stop them? Why didn't He just put well, rules that's around a very, it? That's actually a very good point. God forbid murder. God forbid stealing anything. Even though people freedom. are still going to do it, right? So instead, yeah. But what you're saying is this thing, your argument for why he didn't forbid it is because he knew people would just do it anyway. And what's weird is that um, globally, slavery is not mm. just a given. It's like a cultural thing in some areas. Yeah, we got rid of it here. Well, actually, we haven't gotten rid of it here. Uh, uh, human uh, trafficking is still really bad in the U.S. That's a huge... Which, by the but way, it's illegal. It is illegal. <laughs> right. It's not legal anymore. It was illegal in the Old Testament, too. No, it, no, wasn't. it wasn't. No, yeah. it wasn't. Part of the law has explained how to run your e slaves. Exodus twenty one sixteen that you read to me last time said, if you kidnap anyone and That's tell them not, they slave, That is not Matthew. Death. Matthew, this is the problem. Every time one of you people thinks that you can make excuses for slavery... A passage that says don't kidnap doesn't tell you anything about slavery because slavery doesn't just occur through kidnapping. And a passage about that is you also are exactly about exactly right. And you a passage about that correct. I know I'm absolutely right. Yeah. Let me finish. And a passage about kidnapping isn't about slavery. There are other ways that people enter into slavery. I, my objection is that it is an endorsement that you can own people as property pass them on to your kids. We're 10 minutes past where we should have stopped the show, so I'm going to end the call here, but I'm going to let you know that you're welcome to call back unless you're going to keep making excuses to find a way to make it seem like we can find a way to make slavery a softer, gentler slavery, and my God is such a weak-ass God that he can tell us not to lie, but not to not own people. The first commandment, well, the first... Not to or oppress he did. He said you could beat them. I mean, okay, the so you've got a jackass beating, God yeah. who says you can own people, and here's all the rules about how you own people, but don't miss Pete and oppress them. Owning people is oppressing them. But they were allowed to beat them. You're allowed to beat them as long as they don't die within a couple days. That's and not that, oppression, though. That's just mild temporal oppression. Stop making excuses for your holy book. It is an abomination. 
It encourages abominations. And the more you sacrifice your humanity and your morality to make excuses and try to make it look like, well, God really wanted people to love each other, but they just wouldn't. So he wanted to nudge them in the right direction by saying, you can own people, but just don't beat them too damn much. That's still a weak-ass, immoral God. And you are better than that. Stop making excuses for the immorality. Take responsibility for your life and realize that even if a God tells you that you can own somebody, that God is a piece of shit. <laughs> Thus endeth the lesson. We're way over time. We gotta, okay. we gotta let you go. Go to Star of India. Uh, and that, that, by the way, is why I wouldn't worship your God. Oh, and and don't forget the blog. We have the open thread on the blog. Extra sad that if people If you want to go comment on yes, that Thursday. Uh, and that's for the callers as well. If you're a caller and you think we treated you unfairly and you think you have a better argument you weren't allowed to get in, you go to that blog. There's an open show thread for today's show, and you can post your argument and say, hey, they were misunderstanding me. They didn't give me a chance to talk. They whatever. And make your arguments there. And that way you can embarrass yourself in total instead or of in part. you might be able to convince some of the people at the blog and the, where you couldn't convince us. Yeah. That's it for this week's show. We'll see something good at Star of India. I'm out. And uh, I don't think I'm here next week. I don't know for sure. Well, I don't look know. At the schedule. I'm not. <laughs> Atheist-experience.com has a schedule up. Thanks to the folks on the other side of the glass, all of you who tuned in this week, and the crew over there who makes everything workable, whose names will appear now as we wave goodbye. Great crew and audience. This is Russell Glasser, host of The Atheist Experience. You know, The Atheist Experience is made possible by volunteers and the generous support of viewers like you. If the promotion of positive atheist culture and separation of church and state are values that you hold, please consider contributing by becoming an ACA member or visiting our product page at EvolveFish.com under the Partner tab. Thank you.